I'm originally from the Tidewater area, which is Portsmouth, Virginia. For those folks that are not sure about Portsmouth, it's near Norfolk and Virginia Beach. Um, and my parents, um, A.G. Pruitt and Eula Pruitt, uh, were originally from, my mom was from North Carolina, my dad was from Tennessee, LaGrange, Tennessee, um, fairly small places. And one of the things that I'm always excited about uh, attending the Acela luncheon is the fact that it awakens so many people to our historic le uh, legacy and you know what we need to be about to keep that legacy alive. And I think that it, it makes sure that you remember you can't be complacent because our foreparents fought for a lot of things. And now that people are, have positions, people start thinking, you know, well, things are going very well and we don't have to worry about it, but look where we are now in terms of looking at the truth and understanding that the truth matters. And, and that's why I just love coming to this event of the year. We're certainly happy that you do make the trip here. Are you coming from Portsmouth still? I'm, no, I am in Maryland now. Oh, very yeah, good. I've been living in Maryland for a while, yes. Outstanding. With regards to uh, family history, um, tell me a bit about uh, why you feel family history is important and how it, it, it has impacted your life to this point. Well, for me, I just think it's important to uh, keep our parents' legacy alive. I know that back during my mom and dad's time, you know, segregation was alive and well. My mom, uh, growing up in North Carolina, really um, had an outstanding opportunity to um, work on a farm with her parents, and her dad and grandfathers were able to save that land, and that was kind of unheard of back then, for them to have over 40 acres and just keep it passed down through the family. And I think with my dad, he wanted to get out of Tennessee so that he could see more of the world because he knew many of his siblings had never left that area. So he joined the military and was able to travel all over the world. And, uh, you know, live in California, passed down his tidbits to us and me being the oldest about how we should live and what we need to avoid, the relationships, all these really crazy things that, you know, you just said, this is really weird hearing from your parents. But um, I just, it just struck a chord with me because fast forward, my dad eventually uh, became a minister and he wanted to have a church built. And he, you know, was like an assistant at different churches, started that process in, in Tidewater, in Portsmouth, to get this church built, going to the city council meetings so that they could, you know, begin to lay the stone and framework for it. But he died when he was 64. And so my mom was able to carry that legacy on, that vision, and the others around her to get a church to come up as not a storefront, but a real church. And, you know, I'm just so proud that they were able to do that with what they had. So it wasn't something where, you know, you, you can um, say that you already have the money, you can just build it and it's there. This took a lot of work for a lot of people for that to happen. I want to marry uh, the two statements you made before into this next question. Um, your uh, faithful attendance here at Asala, along with your love and appreciation for the work that your parents did as a part of your family history. Would you think that it might be a good thing, potentially, for Asala to have like a kiosk at their next luncheon so folks can come in and tell portions of their family history so that it can be recorded as potentially a part of the Asala membership family history, oral history database. What do you think about that idea? Absolutely. I think that would be absolutely phenomenal to have those stories told because like I said, you have those of us who are over 60, you have the 40 plus generation who are just beginning to have their children and then you have the young people in their teens or 20s. 
So all of those stories can blend and they can learn from each other. And these are things that would never be forgotten. That was one of the things that I was really proud of when I um, decided to write a book talking about what minority women, um, how they uh, become successful. Um, advice from the top, you know, what my minority women do for it to become successful. And had the opportunity to showcase that work here at Acela at one of their uh, author book fairs. And that was probably in 2010, I believe. My mom was alive when that book came through to fruition. So she knew that I had done this woman, a book talking about black women, interviewing 14, different black women, some very well known, you know, like Kathy Hughes and Andrea Rowan and Eunice Dudley, the multimillionaires, as well as others who labor every day, unknown, but doing phenomenal work in the community. So she knew, and I had dedicated that book to her and my dad, because my dad was already gone. So she got to see the, you know, the cover that the book folks do. So she knew what it looked like. She wasn't around to get the hard copy, but she knew what it looked like. And to me, that was like one of my um, most proud moments because I knew that all of what I was able to do was because of the labor that she put in all of these other women before me to you know, have that drive to want to go to school, to want to learn, to network and be part of these organizations. Alex Haley, author of Roots, said, in every conceivable manner, the family is linked to our past, bridged to our future. How does that statement impact you? Linked to our past. I, I have to say that I, I see that every day. I mean, even now, we I get letters from folks who want to purchase the land that my mom and dad and all of them had. Uh, particularly my mom in North Carolina with her sisters. And we have to fight to keep that land because there are people there who um, have their farmers or what have you, and they are used to just going in, taking the timber, not informing you that they have cut timber off of your land, getting the money, and it's, it's, it's really hard. And, but it, it reminds you that if you want to keep their legacy alive, you have to do what it takes to hold on to that land. So, you know, you can have a future for your children and children's children to hold on to something. Beautiful. And we'll quickly segue to our voter question. This is an election year. The vote is very important. And in particular, in the African-American community, excuse me, the African-American community. Um, what does the right to vote mean to you personally? For me personally, there is no choice but to be at the polls. And because I know how important it is to have not just those at the top, that is the president or the governors, those at the state level, but we have to be vigilant at the local level because that's where it starts. When you want services in your community, if you don't know who your county council people, who, you don't know who your county um, district uh, person is, all of these people are making decisions every day about what comes into your community, the businesses that create all of these road problems, that you have to be alert so that you can't be asleep when you see uh, the big box stores coming in and uh, taking over. So I've always been active in organizations, whether it's a sorority or uh, you know, just civic associations, homeowners associations, to be aware of what the next step is. That doesn't mean we've always been successful, but we have been at the table going up to county council testifying about we don't want this. So the folks know that we as a community need to be consulted before you decide to make some changes. So um, in, in conjunction with that, I know with one of the women's groups I've been involved in, we've actually held election forums where we brought people into the community who were running for office, had them speak so that they could not hide 
to say what their positions were. So, you know, people are knowledgeable. So when they go away, it's not just that robocall or someone coming to your door asking for a vote. They actually had the candidates there so they could ask them questions directly. So that's, that's just very, very important to me. And for the, the folks now, when we're talking about in November, we have to do all we can to get the strongest candidate out so that we can get the presidency um, back to its glory where truth matters.